pool. Got it. This time on Fox can fix it. It's time for a quickie rear brake job on the daily driver. So let's get to it. Should be pretty easy. One thing to remember when doing anything where the vehicle's tires are gonna be off the ground is you want to support it properly. So jack it up and then jack stands at stable points. And you can always leave the jack there. It's not gonna hurt anything, but don't just use a jack. Use jack stands. Also, when you're doing brake jobs or anything dirty, uh, it's important to wear proper attire, a shirt you don't care about, and some pants, and proper footwear. So just remember that you don't wanna get hurt. Okay, first little tip slash trick. If your tires are stuck on there, just from being on there for a while, best thing to do is kind of mule kick them off. Don't get a hammer, don't pry on them. Just mule kick them from behind with your heel and they'll pop right off. Oh yeah, from right here, we're getting a little bit of singing from our warning indicator. And as you can see here, yeah, that's less than the backing plate, so it's time to go. This is the backing plate right here. And that's the actual pad material. When the pad material gets thinner than your backing plate, generally that's when you'll start making noise from this piece right here, which is designed to do that. When you start hearing it, change it out and you can save the rotors. When you get to crunchy, grindy noises, well, you've kissed your rotors goodbye. It appears to be a 10 millimeter, most, most, I won't say all, most of your Japanese stuff, when they do metric, is uh, all even numbers, 8, 10, 12, 14, 16, on up. For some reason, they don't use odd numbers very often. I've seen a handful of 13s and 17s. Other than that, almost everything with them is even numbered metric, which cuts down your rinse selection, so that's good. This is a really simple setup. This one is one bolt here, and one on the bottom, right there. And now we should be able to get this caliper off with a little bit of persuasion from a screwdriver. Go right between the caliper and the caliper bracket when you do it and pry along the edge of this. You don't want to pry on the face of this at all. As you can see, here's our caliper. Now this is the piston. The piston, when these pads are new, is flush with this metal surface. As you can see, it's out a good half inch to nine sixteenths, and these pads are about done. This one has a little sort of tri-footed clippy thingy, and this one has clips there that will slide off. So we'll take those off real quick, and then we'll push this piston back in. You gotta take this one off first, and you're not reusing them. So just take your screwdriver and pry them. It's not doing anything anymore. Then this one should come right out. And that piston was actually out far enough I almost couldn't get that out. So, here's my, not the bestest way in the world, but pretty easy way to do this. Big pair of slip joint pliers and just squeeze. And as you can see, that piston's going right back up in. and just go until it stops on its own. Voila, it is clean. So we've got our piston pushed back in. We've got our pads off. Let's get our new pads out. Bring our box O parts. Um, with newer cars, there's three different types of brake pad material. There's organic, there's semi-metallic, and there's ceramic. Generally speaking, newer cars don't cheap out on it, get whatever it came with from the factory. Unless you're towing or doing something extra with it all the time, just get what it came with from the factory. If it says ceramic is original, spend the extra couple bucks to get the ceramic. If it says semi-metallic, get the semi-metallic. Here's our difference in pad material. This one is worn out 
This is how it used to look. See how thick this pad material is? This one's done. So I doubt these have ever been changed. Uh, a little over 100,000 miles on the truck. Back brakes do 20% to 30% of the stopping. So these are probably some OG pads that we just took off. Again, don't have to, force a habit. But uh, just make sure you're using one of each. It doesn't matter left to right on this particular vehicle. You just need one inner, one outer. I'm spray my hand pink. I don't want my hands making noises later either. Here we go. This one came with new slides. These look okay. I think I'm just gonna hose these off with some brake clean and lube them up. I know this isn't the most exciting video in the world, but you know, you gotta have brakes, at least most of the time. Oh yeah, those will be fine. I'm not gonna replace the slides, but we will. So we break Glide, which is a very specific high temperature silicone lubricant. And we put that right along all those edges. Here and here. You know, you don't want to put too much on, but you also don't want to put too little on. Wrong cap, right cap. All right. So now what we're going to do is we are going to go reverse order. We're going to put the inner one in first. It will clip in place just like that. Hopefully you can see that. I don't know if the camera's even at the right angle anymore. And the outer one slips on and should clip into place somewhere like that. And there's two holes here, one, two. Those are actually important. They will line up with these little detents uh, that come out of there so that this sits flush. All right, back together we go. This doesn't like to play. There we go. And I will also put some of the brake glide lubricant onto our slide bolts or slide pins because they should be. The caliper actually slides back and forth on this. So if you're getting uneven pad wear, then it's probably because these need to be lubricated or if you have the old slide style. If the slides need to be lubricated. And we'll tighten up our tins and one of your bolts. You don't have to he-man these. These are just snug plus a few taps. Okay, so that's snug. Let's tap until it stops moving. You should be good. Side A completed. Yeah. Nice. Side two is just a wash, rinse, repeat of the other one. And that's what they call a pad slap. All you're doing is removing this, taking the old pads off, push the piston in, new pads, slap it back on, and voila, your brakes are done. The most important part of this job, other than replacing the brakes, the actual most critical part comes right at the end. You've got all your lug nuts, at least snugged up, you put the car back on its own weight, you need to torque these lug nuts down. Look in your owner's manual, find out what the torque is, go get a torque wrench, they don't cost that much. But you don't wanna overdo it and you don't wanna own, underdo it. If you overdo it with the big like air impact, battery impact, you'll never get these off on the side of the road. If you underdo it, this is going to pass you going down the highway when it comes off. So it's important, please torque your lug nuts. You don't have to do them in stages. You can just go right to 100, 120, whatever it is. Just go until it clicks and then do a star pattern. Don't, so I did this one. Don't go to this one and go around. Just go one, two, three, four, five, six. Alternate. It's just a thing. Who knows why? Two. 
and make sure you get all the slack out of the active vehicle motion first. And there. So there. Okay. Down here. Slack out. Slack out of vehicle motion. Two clicks. Last one. Slack out of vehicle motion. Two clicks. And then, just out of habit, I always go back around and check them out. One more time, and you don't have to skip this time. You're just making sure they all click. That concludes rear brake pads, the same would work on the front. Uh, the only difference on the front is uh, the rotors are wider. Sometimes the pads are a little bit bigger, but it's the same setup. If you have like a pedal pulse under normal braking, where you have a weird vibration in the steering wheel, then you've got a rotor issue and you should replace the rotors as well. This one pulled dead straight, but I was starting to get noise. So you pad slap it. It's a quick job, you can do it at home. It's one of the easiest brake jobs there is. So. Next time you need brakes and you're starting to hear it like that, go ahead and do it yourself. You'll save a lot of money and you'll get a sense of accomplishment out of it. It's something you can do. All right. See you next time.